and the faith that he had by climbing the tree. Jesus called him to come and told him that today I go to them. Now he was having the gift of a fly in his house. There are men of God are about now, which is not possible in you to see life. We may have physical things on this world, but it's great to have a There is only one way we climb high in the spirit. And on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness. Amen. And the house of Jacob will possess their possession. Amen. We have come from every nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Lord is mighty Amen. among his children. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In God's own time, he makes all things beautiful. Amen. And first of all, I want to bless our living God. Amen. Who has counted me this day worthy. Amen. That I should be an instrument to be used to his own glory. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We also thank our pastor who is not here by Ukomo, the brethren. I thank also our evangelist, our dear Pastor Andy, our dear Minister Peku, my co workers Dickens. Hallelujah. Amen. May God bless you for your great support. Amen. My brothers and sisters in the living God. I thank God also for your lives. Amen. Even our children. Hallelujah. Amen. And I thank God also for the life of my family. Amen. 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 The Lord is always great. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is always wonderful. Amen. And the choristers were singing, they are saying that they are, we are going to declare the goodness of the living God. Amen. Because our God is omnipotent God. He always does miracles. He always does great things. And for this cause, we are going to declare them. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says for this cause, Jesus Christ came down to destroy the works of darkness. Jesus Christ came down to save me and you. Amen. Jesus Christ came down to redeem us unto himself. Amen. Jesus Christ came down to reconcile me and you unto God. Amen. Jesus Christ came down to save us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And our Bible says, as many as believe in him and trust in him, he proved himself strong. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I have not yet come to my message. Uh -huh. I will give you the team. Hallelujah. Yes. The Bible says that Peter, whom Jesus Christ gave the key, he was fasting and praying. And the Lord revealed unto him that a sheet was coming down when he fell in France. He thought. And the, uh, the voice was that he should kill this animal and eat. And he said that he has never eaten such an unclean animal. After that encounter, when he finished, he heard that there were men at the door knocking. And this man, when they came and met Peter, they brought their curriculum. And their curriculum was that Mr. Cornelius had called them, they have sent them, that they should come and call him to him. And Peter, without hesitating, went with this uh, people. When Peter went to the house of Cornelius, the Bible says he narrated his story. He presented his curriculum. What he was doing and the voice that he heard. And that was the reason. And after that, he saw this man. And that's the reason that I am here. And he told the household that, you know that it is not good for the Jews to enter into the house of the hidden. But because of what I saw and what I heard and what this man, that's why I am here. Amen. I want to hear about your curriculum. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, Mr. Cornelius also presented his curriculum. That he was also fasting and praying and he saw an angel of God in white apparel. And he told him that God will send people to go and call Peter. And Peter will tell you what to do. And let us open up. Uh, now we we'll go to the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That after this curriculum, Peter says something. The book of Acts chapter 10. 34 and 35. A 
fast reader if you are there. If not, let me myself. Acts 10, 34 says, mm -hmm. The Peter opened his mouth uh -huh. and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respective of persons. Uh -huh. 35. But in every nation, he that fears him and walketh righteousness, he, he accepted with him. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That the song that we sang, that the Lord is mighty over every nation. Hallelujah. Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, truly, I perceive that God is not respecter of person. But in every nation, if God is mighty in every nation, but in every nation, they that fear it, the Lord. Hallelujah. And work at righteousness. He, that person, the Lord has said. Hallelujah. We are going to take them one by one. That's not that what Peter said. That with my curriculum and with your own, now I can conclude that surely and truly the Lord is not respecter of person. Amen. Hallelujah. But in every nation, whether south or not, hallelujah, in every nation, in every color, in every race, in every tribe, God is not respecter of nation, not respecter of race, not respecter of color, not respecter of culture, hallelujah. God is not respecter of tribe. God is not respecter of tradition. God is not respecter of achievement. God is not respecter of social and political statutes. Amen. God is not respecter of your position. God is not respecter of what you have achieved. Amen. But God is respecter of who that feareth the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. In every nation. So that nation, whether you are blue or black, you are white. That is not what the Lord is expecting. Amen. Any grace, that is not what God is respecting. Hallelujah. Amen. The achievement and statute, your stature, whether short or tall, that is not what the Lord is looking for. Amen. But the one who feared the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The one who feared God is the one who reverence God. Is the one who believes in God. The one who has faith in God. The one who acknowledges the mercies of God. Amen. Acknowledge that God is merciful. God is gracious. Hallelujah. God blesses. At the same time, God is terrible. God judges the one who acknowledges this. The one who has faith in the living God. Amen. That's the one that God respects. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In every nation. In every nation, whether Antarctic, whether China, whether Ghana, wherever, the, in every nation, in every color, the one who feared the living God. Amen. And not only fearing and reverencing, not only having faith and believing, not only acknowledging that God is merciful and gracious, Amen. God blesses and God judges. But the one also, after acknowledging this, you work towards it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The one also who work at righteousness, we work towards it. And as we are working towards righteousness, we don't stand at one place. Hallelujah. It's a continuous act. It is a type of climbing up. Hence, the message or the topic of my message is that the need the hour that those that fear the living God and those that are prepared to work righteousness, those that we want the Lord to respect us, the Lord to accept us, that the need that we climb up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Bible said that they fear the Lord and they that work righteousness, they are the one that God accepts them. Hallelujah. As many who reverence God, Fearing God, believing Him, and as many that work at righteousness, they are the people that God accepts. Hallelujah. Amen. And since working righteousness is not an act of stagnancy, it's not an 
out of stay at one place, there's a need that me and you we climb up. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. There's no room for us to climb down. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hence, my topic is climbing up. Yes. And when one is climbing up, the Bible said that Jacob at battle, when he was sleeping, he saw a ladder from heaven towards the ground. And you saw angels climbing and descending. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Our steps is the word of God. The steps that we climb to go up. Climbing up is an act one has to put on effort. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't sleep, we don't stagger to climb up. It needs an effort. And this effort, what goes an act of going upward, vertically, heavenly. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't climb down. He said that person who climbed up, the Lord will accept. The Lord will receive. And the Lord accepts him also that he is the one that the Lord is going to receive. He's the one that the Lord is going to answer. He's the one that the Lord is going to answer not only physically, but more especially spiritually. Hallelujah. Because the Bible if we seek here first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, all other things will be added unto us. Hallelujah. So when the Lord accepts us, as we fear him and work righteousness, the Lord is going to bless us. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to answer us. The Lord is going to receive us in every nation. Those that fear the living God. Today, the church of God, the fear of God is diminishing. Hallelujah. But God is saying that they that fear the living God, not men. Knowing that God is gracious, but God is also terrible. That the things that we do, even in the secret place, the Lord sees them all. Our judgment is not coming from men, but it is coming from this living God. Who sees everything? They that fear the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For us to climb up, it is not a routine. It is not always the normality. I come to church, and that is the end. Hallelujah. If, if not so, it will be sitting down. Because when you sit down and you fall down, you don't have any pain. After a level is level. <laughs> Hallelujah. But there's a time that we have to progress. It is an act. It's an, a progressive act. Amen. It is a progressive act. Amen. Even demons, demons, they, they progress. Hallelujah. Yes. Commonly we do say, and I don't think we give second thought of what we say. We normally say that if the devil is looking for you and he don't get you, he passes you in your child or the loved one. Why did he pass your child to your child? Because he tried you and he could not. He refused to be a failure. So he tried for another strategy. How much more children of God? Hallelujah. Let us see something in the book of Numbers. Numbers 22, the verse 41. And we see even how demons. And how agents of the devil even change strategy. They even want to climb up. Just for their evil deeds to be accomplished. Yesterday, our dear brother who exalted us was saying that Pilate and Herod were enemies. But for them to make sure that Jesus Christ had been crucified, they became friends. Hallelujah. They even changed strategy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That their evil works be accomplished, they have to reconcile. Hallelujah. After many years, God bless you. Please, if you are there, you can read. Numbers 22, verse 41. Yeah. Is the word of the Lord. And it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high place of Baal. That there is he might see the utmost part of the people. Mm -hmm. God bless you. The Bible says, we honor the 
a story, but I want to see certain things over there. So it came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places. Hallelujah. Of Baal. That hence he might see outermost part of the people. We know the story. That's when the people of Israel were coming, Balak, the king of Noah, saw the people from afar and he said, Alas, we are dead. If I am to allow these people to pass through our land, they are going to lick us up like water. So he found a strategy that before the people reach his land, he went to hide Balaam. That Balaam should come and kill the people. And when Balaam came, he met him at the border. He made the sacrifice, everything. And the morrow, the next day, he took them to a high places. He took them on top. So couldn't Balaam had taken his horse being two or three people, just go around and see the people. Because one, they were not having armies or weapons, the people of Israel may not think that they are coming to destroy them. So you could have just take a stroll and show uh, Balaam of the people. But he didn't want to remain on the level. He took rather Balaam to on top of the mountain so that he can see the people the better. Remember the taking of Balaam to the mountain was for him to see the people better so that he will lower down the burden. The climbing up, as I'm talking of, it is not climbing up to remain there. You are climbing up for a motive. And the climbing up, you climb up to lower your burden. Hallelujah. You don't just climbing. You are climbing up to lower your own burden. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And the burden of Balak was that these people will come and destroy my land. These people will come and occupy my land. This was the burden of Balak. Sorry, Balak. And for this cause, he hid somebody. That this burden will be away from him. Because bringing this man to curse these people, to him he will be free. His burden will be taken. Hallelujah. Amen. When one is to lower your burden, it is like to drop your burden. To cast out your burden. Hallelujah. Amen. And the burden of Balaam, of Balaam, sorry, was Balaam to come and curse the people of Israel so that this burden, he will be released. He will be relieved. He will be free. Hallelujah. Amen. And you can just imagine. Even he that having this evil plan, send this man on top of the mountain so that he can see the valley, the people, so that his burden will be relieved. Hallelujah. Let us see the 23. The same number 23. From the verse 15. Numbers 23, verse 15, I read. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by the burnt offering while I meet the Lord yonder. <coughs> and the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go again unto Balak in Sipos. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by the burnt offering and the prince of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What has the Lord spoken? And he took up his, pari uh, his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good behold i have received commandment to bless and he had blessed and i cannot re uh, reverse it Amen. okay he said he had not beheld iniquity in jacob neither had he seen perver perverseness in israel 
The Lord his God is with him. And the shout of a king is among them. Hallelujah. God bless you. <laughs> what we want, because we all know the story. That the monarch as he took him to the place. <laughs> Instead of uh, Balaam cursing, he blessed the people. And he told them, no, I think you are not seeing the people very well. <laughs> so he took him to a higher place. Where he stood for the first time. And instead of blessing, of cursing, he blessed them. He changed the strategy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said that, look, I have another place. Maybe you are not seeing them very well. Because so, this man was carrying this burden in his heart. And he wanted this burden to be lowered. He wants this burden to be cast out. He wants a relief from this burden. So he changed the position. Hallelujah. Children of God, it is time that we change our position. We change the way of doing things in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time that we have to find new strategy. It's time that we have to climb up in the Lord. It's time that we have to try to do exploits. It is time for us to move forward, Amen. to go beyond Amen. Amen. what we are normally doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is only true that. Amen. If the man, which is not of God, was trying every means possible, changing strategy, changing position, and he was not going down, but he was going higher and higher, how much more children of the living God? It is time that we have to move forward. Hallelujah. It's a time that we have to go beyond the normal routine. Amen. The normal routine of coming to church day service. Hallelujah. The normal routine of sometimes we come to prayer meeting, sometimes we don't come. Mm -hmm. It's a time that we don't climb down. That once we are coming to prayer meeting, but now we are staying at home. It's a time that we have to move forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Bible says that devil, even the demon, they are not sleeping. And they are looking for a righteous man to bring him or her down. Hallelujah. It is time for us to move forward. Amen. We are going to say Luke chapter 5. The verse 4 and 5. We are going to see something over there. We are climbing up. Luke chapter 5, verse 4. This is the word of the Lord. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your net for a drought. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. So over here, the Bible says, we all know Jesus that wherever he went, he was doing good. Amen. And because he was doing good, there were many multitudes of people who always followed Jesus. And it came to pass that Jesus, as the mob of the people was pressing him at the shore, he saw two boats, and the people there out, the fishermen were out, they were mending their nets. And the Bible says, because the people were pressing him, he rented one of the boats. He sat in the boat just to teach the people. I told you that the scholar or the stairs that one will climb up, it is only through the word of God. And Jesus, as he was in the boat, he was teaching the people to climb up in the spirit. After teaching the people, the Bible said that he told Simon, now trash feather, launch into the deep, for a drought. In short, after hearing the word of God, he was telling Peter to climb up and lower his burden. And what was the curriculum of Peter? The curriculum of Peter was that I am a very good and experienced and long term fisherman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. My father was a fisherman. And since I was young, I was going with my father. I know very well how to read the weather. I know every tactics. Hallelujah. And all night, 
I have toiled. And not toiled only, after toiled all night, I catch nothing. Here I was asking myself, the Bible said that before Jesus rented this boat, the fishermen were mending their net. So here I can see that they catch nothing of fish. You know sometimes in the sea, we all know we are from Africa, we know sometimes when the night, when it comes, there might be some wheat. There might be some rubbish. So I believe that when he cast his net, not that he did not catch nothing, but he catch what he was not expecting. Hallelujah. Amen. And that thing that he was not expected also turned his net. Hallelujah. So Peter was having multiple problems. He tried all night. Upon all his experience, he caught nothing. His net also had some holes. Then the next time, if your adventure is to go on fishing, if you to catch a fish, some of the fishes will pass through the hole and go. Hallelujah. So that's why he was mending his net. So when Jesus told him that first feather, large into deep, he said, Master, I have taught all night. It is not how long you have taught for the matter. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not the experience you have for the matter. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not how you know the strategy of fishing in the of the living God. Yeah. Launch into the deep. Hallelujah. Amen. In the faith of Jesus, the word of God, launch into the deep. Climb higher. That is the matter. Hallelujah. Jesus. We are going to see another uh, 
thing in the book of Matthew. Something wonderful that also Jesus Christ did. Remember, we said the beginning that every nation he that feareth the Lord. In every nation, who that worketh righteousness, in every nation is the one that the Lord will accept. So it means irrespective of your color, irrespective of your nation, irrespective of your tradition, irrespective of whatever you are used to, when you fear the living God, and when you work righteousness, the Lord is going to accept you. Hallelujah. Matthew 15, 21 to 28. Matthew 15 verse 21 read then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon mm -hmm. and behold a woman of Canaan came unto the same coast and cried unto him saying have mercy on me O Lord thou son of David my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil and he answered her not a word and his disciples came on and besought him saying send her away for she cried after us but he answered and said I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel verse 25 then came and then came and she then came she and worshiped him saying Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meant to the to take the children's bread and to cast it to dog. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Hallelujah. This is a woman who is not part of the commonwealth of Israel. But remember, in every nation, who feareth the living God? This is a woman from Canaan, a Canaanite woman. He is not from Judah, he is not from Samaria, he is not from wherever in Jerusalem. Neither is he from Ephraim or Benjamin or whatever. The Bible says that this woman is coming from Canaan. So in every nation, the Lord is not respecter of person, but in every nation who will fear the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said that this woman saw Jesus Christ. This woman from Canaan saw Jesus Christ and the disciples. And he ran, she ran unto Jesus, telling the oh Lord, son of David, it means that this woman have heard about Jesus. I believe that this woman has gone to many malams because he's coming from Canaan. I believe that this woman know everywhere that Juju and Babalawa people are. Because he has been going from places to places wherever he is. solution. When she hears that there's a man here who is good, she ran to. That caused her to hear that there's a man who is called Jesus Christ. From the descendant of David, she, he is doing wonders and marvelous things. Because this woman had heard before, that's why when she heard that Jesus was passing by, she met Jesus and said, oh son of David, have mercy upon me. Hallelujah. Amen. When this woman saw Jesus, she did not ask around, but who is this man? Because she has already heard. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, have mercy upon me, son of David. At first, the Bible said that Jesus did not answer. So you should take note, even being from Canaan, and asking that the Lord should have mercy, Faith did, said did not answer. So when we place our request before the living God, and we have our own agenda, and today the Lord did not answer, that doesn't mean that the Lord will never answer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. At first, Jesus did not answer. And second, the disciples who were following Jesus also told Jesus that, Master, send her away because she is disturbing us. She is making noise behind us. Hallelujah. So when you place your request, before the living God, and you don't have immediate answer, don't lose hope. Amen. Go further. Yes, oh. Hallelujah. Amen. Even when the same brethren will try to ward you off, don't give hope. Don't lose hope. Go further. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Go further. Hallelujah. Now that Jesus Christ wanted to answer this woman another blow, before he did not answer her, second thing the disciples are also sucking her. Thirdly, Jesus is also telling that, look, truly I am the son of David, and I have come truly, but I have not come for the Canaanite. I came for my people, but this woman still went further. Hallelujah. He said, it's not good that I should give the children's meat to dogs. Now this woman has become a dog. Hallelujah. But this woman knows very well that even dogs, when crowns fall from their master's table, they eat it. Hallelujah. And Jesus cannot now hold his peace. He said, I've never found such a great faith. Hallelujah. So the most important thing is to move forward. Hallelujah. Climb higher and higher. Hallelujah. And now Jesus healed this daughter. And he was he refused to be intimidated. This woman refused to be intimidated. This woman refused to be stagnant. This woman refused to be where she was. This woman refused to be called a shame. Because I can just imagine having a daughter who was faced with demons. People might be pointing hands against her. That's why that whenever she hears that there's a madam, or whenever she hears, there's this and that she will be running to. But this woman refused to be intimidated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, children of God, God is telling me and you that we should be refused to be intimidated. Amen. That's the that we have to move forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This woman refused. She refused to be in the same situation. Because coming unto Jesus, he knows that Jesus is the answer. The disciples casting her away was not the answer. Jesus not answering her was not what she was expecting. Whether being dog or goat was not what she was expecting. All what she was expecting that her daughter will be made whole. Hallelujah. And she has heard that Jesus is giver of life. So once I met Jesus, I will never leave this man unless my daughter has been made whole. So she will never allow any circumstance to look to lower her down. Hallelujah. Jesus. We are going to see another thing in the book of the same uh, Luke. We we'll go back to Luke. Luke chapter 5. But this time verse 17 and 20. And it came to pass on his thirty day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and adulterers of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord were present to heal them. Okay. Eighteen. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a passing, and that's what it means to bring in, in, and to lay in before him. be in because of the multitude. They went up and asked, asked him, and let him down, though the teller was with his coach, unto the midst before Jesus. Hallelujah. 20. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Men, thy sins are forgiven thee. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. We have seen another incident when Jesus Christ, we know Jesus Christ to be a team leader. Jesus Christ was a crowd puller. That wherever he was, crowd was following him. Thousands of people followed Jesus Christ. Rich and poor. Needy and curious. Self-interest. Those who were following him for their self-interest were still following him. Because remember that Jesus had many occasions, you even cause uh, bread to be multiplied. So it means that if I don't have food in my house, I can follow him with the hope that a miracle is going to be conducted and I will eat free. So the self-interest will follow him. The sick ones also with the aim of having their healing. The critics were also following Jesus. Because on many occasions, for time's sake, I'm running. 
For many occasions, the Pharisees will be criticizing Jesus. Why did you heal the Sabbath? If they were not there, when the healing would took place, would they have criticized? No. So all the time they were from. So the critics were also following him. The looks and the marks were also following him. There were people who were following him only to look at what Jesus would do. And people were only following him to mark what he's doing. The Pharisees and the scribes were following him. The disciples were also following him. There were people also who were prepared to learn. Also following him. And fault finders were also following him. And at this place also, there were burden carriers as well. That's why I tell you to take note of the verse 19. The burden carriers. The Bible said that there was a man who was sick of palsy in the bed. And this man, because he cannot do anything, the friend, if this man is to eat, it was the burden of the friend. If this man wants to sleep, they have to carry this man. So it was this man who was uh, staying his, his kingdom on the bed. When somebody is in his kingdom, he has taken the green, uh, green card. As for him, he has accepted that I am passing, I am powerless. I cannot move. What can I do? It is not my fault. And everybody around me knows that I cannot work on my own. I cannot do things of my own. So these friends, they are the ones who are carrying the burden. Hallelujah. And this burden career saw that Jesus Christ was a certain place. And multitude of people have surrounded him. And they can acknowledge that all those people who are surrounding Jesus, some of them might not have a burden as how they were having a burden career. And these people saw that this multitude is going to be a hindrance, an obstacle that their burden can be cast down, that their burden can be liberated. So, what did they do? They changed direction. And the direction that they changed, they climbed on top of the roof. Acknowledging that though they were not the people who built that house, but they know that it is human beings that built that house. That if this woman, if this man is to receive his healing, he might be well able to build a house and also roof it. Amen. So these people did not consider the building, the one who built it, not the money that spent, because it is human being who is able to work to have money. Amen. It is human being who is able to work to build a house. But these people work on their faith. Be a burden career. You might be a burden career as you are sitting down. The problem is not on you physically. Hallelujah. Give Jesus. I clap off front to our brother. Hallelujah. 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 But saying... They acted on their faith, and the Bible said that they went on top of the roof. They removed the roofing and dropped their friend before Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ was in that house, and the power of God was there to heal. And those people cannot accept the fact that the people surround Jesus is going to be a hindrance to their burden. You that you are a burden career, change your strategy. Hallelujah. You that you are a burden career, climb on high and lower your burden. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible said that when Jesus Christ saw these people, the faith of these people, he told that sick person, your uh, son has been forgiven. Amen. And he healed that man. Hallelujah. Amen. It means that had it not been that these people removed the top, they would have carried that man back to their house. It is a hard time that you are not going to carry your burden back to your house. Amen. But you are going to lay it at Jesus' feet. Amen. And we are going to have these two weeks of fasting and prayer. Uh -huh. There is a need that me and you participate in this fasting and prayer. Amen. We are not going to be spectators, but we are going to be participants. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are climbing high in these two weeks and lower our burden. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the faith of this man. Like this morning, we are talking about Zacchaeus. And it was part of my message. And through because I was preparing this message, though the Sunday school, I read on the lesson text, the first page. I didn't know that this curse was inside. I got to know when I was sitting down here. But God, in his own way, the Bible said that this man's a curse. This man was rich. 
he was a tax collector, and because he's having his own means of collecting the money, he was rich. It's when he has socially, he has a social stature. He was famous, he was influential. Hallelujah. Amen. This let us show, see these two groups. These people who remove the roof, they are building career. Hallelujah. And look at this man who had everything. Zacchaeus was having everything physically, but he was spiritually poor. Hallelujah. It might be that socially you don't need anything. You are rich. You are having work. You are having husband. You are having children. So everything on natural, you are not, you are not lacking. Hallelujah. Like that man who is lying on the bed, who cannot even walk. Hallelujah. But all of, of, upon all of what Zacchaeus is having, the Bible says he was small in stature. Amen. And the point over here for us to know is that Zacchaeus did not born himself. Zacchaeus, the family that the mother that born Zacchaeus and the father that born Zacchaeus determined his stature. Hallelujah. The family that he was coming from. So it may be that you are not lacking anything, but there's a family barrier that is not causing you to see Jesus Christ. It was the height of Zacchaeus that he cannot see Jesus Christ. Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Amen. Search. There might be something in your family. The stature of Zacchaeus was not his fault. Remember that man on the, uh, who was sick of passing. Jesus first said that your sons have been forgiven. But for Zacchaeus to be short like me, it was not his fault. Hallelujah. Amen. His stature was determined by the family where he was coming from. <laughs> Most of the time, people will see my daughter and they'll say that it's your husband tall. I say yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because when they look at me and see my daughter, they just marvel. Hallelujah. So Zacchaeus' stature was not his fault. So there's something that we are going through, where we are coming from. There might be some limitation that is blocking us not to see Jesus Christ, the life, the truth, and the way. Hallelujah. That's the stature of Zacchaeus. And the Bible said that when Zacchaeus saw himself, that with this stature, though it was not his fault, but with this stature, he cannot see Christ. The best thing he did was to climb Sacramento tree. There's two weeks of fasting and prayer. That whatever be hindrance in your life because of your family background, because of the gods of your house, because of the traditions of your house, because of the things of what our forefathers did, that is not causing me and you to see Jesus Christ. There's a need that we climb on high. Amen. And that burden will be lowered. Hallelujah. When Zacchaeus climbed that tree, the Bible said that because he wanted to have a glimpse of Jesus Christ. He has heard about Jesus Christ. But when Jesus reached there, it was Jesus told him that Zacchaeus, come down. And today I'm going to dine with you in your house. Hallelujah. Amen. Something that Zacchaeus was not even expecting, expecting even more than that. Because to him, he was only to watch that Jesus that people are talking about. Hallelujah. But the faith that he had by climbing the tree, Jesus called him to come and told him that today, I'm going to dine with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now he was having the giver of life in his house. There are many things our background which is not causing me and you to see life. We may have physical things on this world, but spiritually we are poor. Hallelujah. And it's only when we climb high in the spirit that the Lord is going to dine with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Money, that's why the Zacchaeus had money, but money cannot add even one inch to his stature. Hallelujah. Amen. So all what written that we have cannot add inch to our spiritual life. And the Bible said that if we get the whole world and how famous Zacchaeus was could not add an age to his stature. How influential he was couldn't add anything to his nature. So anything, any nature from our family which is not causing us to see the living God, there's a need that we climb high. Hallelujah. 
So in doing these two weeks of fasting and prayer, it is our challenge this day. We should all determine to be part and part of it. Remember that the friends of this pasty man were the people in who were more suffering. Many of us, we are carrying burdens of our family. Maybe in your family, all of them, they are not working. It was just like they are being passed there on the bed. And you are the one who will carry them here and there. Even when they need all yours, they will call you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and you are here, you are working. Like Zacchaeus working. You are here working. You are here having a uh, wife, your children. But your brother, your sister, they are there, they give birth, pom, 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 without husband, without wife, and they will be calling you, my daughter is sick, my son is sick. You are the one who is the burden career. Hallelujah. And as a burden career, there's a need that you climb high. There's a need that you climb high as a bad career. And if you are having everything, being so rich, nobody disturbing you, knowing that also there are some obstacles, there are some gods, there are some things, tradition in our house, which is not permitting us to see Jesus Christ as the giver of life. Hallelujah. So the Lord is inviting me and you that we should climb spiritually and we should lower that burden. And when we lower the burden before Jesus Christ, our life will change forever. Amen. The Lord is going to change our course. Amen. The Lord is going to transform us. Zacchaeus never remained as Zacchaeus of old before. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. But Zacchaeus was a living testimony unto the living God. Will those may the Lord add his blessing.